This is Mrs. Lowe. We're working for her. We are. That's right. Interesting facts about famous people. Train Westerns The establishment of the train across the US was an important time, not just for the country, but great fuel for the Western genre, as they evolved together. A strong icon of early America cannot be ignored. Today, we will take a look at some of those we all know. Let me know in the comments which was your favourite, or add some to the list. If you enjoy this video, hit the notification button to get my new videos. If you want to check out my many other videos, head over to my channel. The link is in the description. Let's continue to celebrate the Western genre. Toot toot. Over the mountains, over the plains, over the rivers, here comes the trains. The Great Train Robbery, 1903 among the earliest existing films in American cinema, notable as an early film to present a narrative story to tell. It depicts a group of outlaws who hold up a train and rob the passengers. They are then pursued by a sheriff's posse. Several scenes have colour included, all hand tinted. The Iron Horse, 1924. After witnessing the murder of his father by a renegade as a boy, the grown-up Brandon helps to realise his father's dream of a transcontinental railway. The Iron Horse was the opening night film for the 15th San Francisco Silent Film Festival in 2010. Train to Tombstone, 1950. One of the passengers on a train to Tombstone decides to rob it of the $250,000 it is carrying. Quote, Conductor George, everybody back away from the windows and keep out of the range of stray shots. Goof. The train has only an engineer, not a fireman. There is nobody to get the fuel 
into the engine. The story is apparently set in the 1880s, but the first practical automatic stoker was not invented until 1905. It has to be there to meet a dead I'd like to give that fellow a piece of my mind if I thought I could spare it. No window. High noon, 1952. A town marshal, despite the disagreements of his newlywed bride and the townspeople around him, must face a gang of deadly killers alone at high noon when the gang leader, an outlaw he sent up years ago, arrives on the noon train. Gary Cooper and Grace Kelly had an affair that lasted for the duration of filming. Three Ten to Yuma, the original, 1957. Broke small-time rancher Dan Evans is hired by the stagecoach line to put big-time captured outlaw leader Ben Wade on the Three Ten train to Yuma, but Wade's gang tries to free him. The remake, 2007. A small time rancher agrees to hold a captured outlaw who's awaiting the train to go to court in Yuma. A battle of wills ensues as the outlaw tries to psych out the rancher. How the West Was Won, 1962. A family saga covering several decades of westward expansion in the 19th century, including the gold rush, the civil war, and the building of the railroads. Stuntman Bob Morgan was seriously injured and almost died while performing a stunt in this picture. Toward the end of the film, there is a gunfight on a moving train between the sheriff and a gang of train robbers. Morgan was one of the stuntmen playing a robber and was crouching next to a pile of logs on a flat car. The chains holding the logs together snapped and Morgan was crushed by the falling logs. He was so badly hurt it took him five years to recover, to the point where he was able to move by himself and walk unaided. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, 1969. In 1890s Wyoming, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid led a band of outlaws. When a train robbery goes wrong, they find themselves on the run with a posse hard on their heels. After considering their options, they escape to South America. On the first day of shooting, involving the train robbery scenes, Catherine Ross came to the set to watch. There were five cameras and only four operators. So cinematographer Conrad Hall put her on the extra camera. He showed her how to operate it and how to move it to get her shot. Director George Roy Hill was furious. He said nothing the whole day. At the end of the day, however, he banned her from the set except when she was working. The Train Robbers. The Train Robbers, 1973. A gun hand named a gun hand a gun hand named Lane is hired by a widow, Mrs. Lowe. 
to find gold stolen by her husband so that she may return it and start fresh. John Wayne fractured two ribs shortly before shooting began, causing such pain that he had difficulty sleeping at night. As a result, the action scenes had, the action scenes had to be scaled down to accommodate his condition, but the tough-minded actor refused to delay the shoot, displaying the same determination and sense of personal integrity that distinguished his on-screen persona. Gentlemen, this is Mrs. Lowe. We're working for her. We are. That's right. Breakheart Pass, 1975. John Deacon is being transported as a prisoner on a train with supplies and medicine to Fort Humboldt, Nevada. The fight on top of the train was performed by stuntman Howard Curtis, doubling Charles Bronson, and Tony Brubaker, doubling Archie Moore, and was directed by stunt coordinator Yakima Knut. His last screen credit in a career that lasted 60 years and included directing The Chariot Race in Ben-Hur, 1959. The Grey Fox, 1982, when an aging but gentlemanly stagecoach robber is released from prison, he decides to go to Canada to become a train robber. The film's director, Philip Borsos, was a protege of Francis Ford Coppola. In both 1984 and 1993, the picture was listed in Canada's top 10 films of all time by the Toronto yep. International Film Festival. Canada's first train Love robbery occurred on the 10th of September, 1904. The film that inspired Bill Miner to rob a train in the 20th century was The Great Train Robbery, 1903. Back to the Future 3, 1985. Marty McFly, a 17-year-old high school student, is accidentally sent 30 years into the past in a time-travelling DeLorean, invented by his close friend, the maverick scientist, Doc Brown. The script was rejected 44 times before it was finally greenlit. Apparently Ronald Reagan was amused by Doc Brown's disbelief that an actor like him could become president. So much so, he had the projectionist stop and replay the scene.
Once Upon a Texas Train, 1988. An outlaw and a Texas Ranger captain have a lifelong personal feud, but 20 years later, with old age settling in, they must put their differences aside in order to face the latest Texas problem, the youngest generation of outlaws. Ken Curtis, who played the part of Festus Hagen in the Western television series Gunsmoke, wore the hat of Doc Adams in this film. Many of the locations and names in this movie are related to Willie Nelson. He is from the Waco, Texas area, from where the train comes, and the Brazos is a large river that flows through Waco. This is Richard Widmark's last Western before his death in 2008. Wild Wild West, 1999. The two best special agents in the Wild West must save President Grant from the clutches of a diabolical, wheelchair-bound, steampunk savvy, Confederate scientist bent on revenge for losing the Civil War. When Will Smith asked his mother what she thought of the movie, she replied, you've done better, baby. Will Smith turned down the lead role in The Matrix, 1999, to star in this movie. Being a fan of the television series, he later said this was the worst decision he made in his career. Kevin Klein. Oh my gosh. I love this train. Kenneth Brown. The Assassination of Jesse James by the Coward, Robert Ford, 2007. Robert Ford, who has idolised Jesse James since childhood, tries hard to join the resurgent gang of the Missouri Outlaw, but gradually becomes resentful of the bandit leader. Cinematographer Roger Deakins has called the arrival of the train in darkness as one of the high points of his career. Brad Pitt's personal favourite of the movies he has acted in. Of all the films made by Jesse James, his descendants have claimed that this was the most accurate. They were especially enthusiastic about Brad Pitt and Casey Affleck's performances. Honourable Mentions The General, 1926 once Upon a Time in the West, 1968. The Lone Ranger, 2013. Help me out and let me know what I have missed. Interesting facts about famous people.